All right, guys, in this video, we will learn about teleporting elements, which is a new feature introduced in the Vue 3 code library made possible with the teleport component. Teleporting, as the name suggests, allows you to move elements from one place to another. To be more technical, it allows you to define a component in one place and render it in a different position in the DOM tree even outside the scope of the view application. Now what does that mean? Well, so far we've had one DOM element in our HTML that we were mounting the view application into. So if I go to the public folder and index.html, you can see that the element is the div element with ID is equal to app. In our main.js file, we use create app.mount and mount our app component onto this root element. So if we take a look at the browser, in the DOM tree, every single view component in our application falls under this root element. That is, the div element with ID is equal to app. What the teleport component provides is the ability to break out of this DOM tree. So you can render a component onto a DOM node that is not under the root element. Let me show you how to use the teleport component with a simple example. The first step is to add a DOM node that falls outside the root element. So in index.html, right below the root element, I'm going to add another div tag with id is equal to portal root. For the second step, I'm going to create a new component. So in the components folder, create a new file called portal.view. Within the file, use the snippet vbase css to create a component. Let's name the component as portal. And in the template, let's add an h2 tag that says portal component. Next, let's include this component in app component. Import portal from components slash portal dot view and add it to the list of components. In the template, invoke the component. If you now save all the files and take a look at the browser, you should be able to see the text portal component. If I inspect the element, you can see that the element falls under the root element and not under the portal root element. Let's change that. For step three, we will wrap the portal component with the teleport component. The teleport tag or the teleport component is an element that is specific to view and not a standard HTML element. On this teleport component, we specify an attribute. The attribute is two and the value is any HTML element or a query selector which specifies a target element where the content has to be moved to. For our example, we need the portal component moved to the div element with id equal to portal root. So let's specify a CSS selector for that. Element with id portal hyphen root. Alright, if we now save the file and take a look at the browser, you should still be able to see the text portal component. But this time, when I inspect the element, you can see that the h2 tag is under the portal root DOM node and not the app DOM node. So in your view application, even though all the components are children to the app component and the app component is mounted onto the app DOM node, it is possible to break away from that and mount on any DOM node you wish to using the teleport component. All right, now that we know what the teleport component can do for us, the next question is, why do we need it? One of the use cases which is often brought up is having to deal with a parent component's CSS when the child component is a modal, a pop-up, or a tooltip. I've set up a code sandbox example to demonstrate this. 
I'm at this code sandbox link, which will of course be in the description. First, we will take a look at this demo with the teleport component, and then I will remove the teleport component and show you what happens. Let me start with index.html. You can see that we have two div elements, one with ID is equal to app and the other with ID equal to modal hyphen root. In main.js, we mount the app component onto the div element with ID is equal to app. Next, in the components folder, we have a modal component. There is a bit of styling for a modal and within the modal content, using slots, we display whatever is passed from the parent component. We also have a button to close the modal. This modal component is imported in the app component and included in the template within a teleport component. In the app component, there is a bit of text, which you can see on the right hand side. We also have a button to open the modal. We use a container class to position all the content in the center and we use a content class that has a max width of 400 pixels and position set to relative. The styling is in the style block. So container to center the content and the content class with a max width of 400 pixels. We also have a data property called show modal which is used to conditionally display the modal component. We pass in a simple text message. This is the secret modal message to replace the default slot in the modal component. If you now go to the UI and click on show modal and it opens, click on close, it closes. So it works perfectly fine. You can see the modal overlay, which is the dark gray background stretching to all four corners. At the moment, the modal is mounted onto the modal hyphen root element in the DOM. Now let me remove the teleport component so that the modal is rendered under the app component, which falls under the app DOM node. If we now save this, head back to the UI, refresh and click on show modal, you can see that the modal breaks. The dark overlay in the background does not stretch to all four corners. Instead, it sort of limits itself to the parent component. Why does this happen? Well, if you can see in the code, the modal falls under a div tag that has a style with max width is equal to 400 pixels. As a result, the modal also has a width restriction now. And that messes up the UI as you can see. So sometimes it's useful to insert a child into a different location in the DOM and the teleport component helps you do that. Also, there are two other benefits in using the teleport component. The first one is that we can continue to nest components within other components. In our example, the modal component will logically still be the child of the app component. There is no complexity whatsoever. The second benefit is that even though a portal can be anywhere in the DOM tree, it behaves like a normal child component in every other way. This includes event bubbling. For example, an event fired from a teleported component will propagate to ancestors in the containing view tree even if those elements are not ancestors in the DOM tree. Alright, that is about the teleport component in view. For our next topic, let's learn about sending HTTP requests in view. Thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.